Hi everyone, it's me Liz with 143 Handmade and I was trying to get my, my sewing room and well craft room really um, all put back together after the, the holiday rush and, and everything and, and I know I haven't been putting out videos as much as I was and I will get back on, on track in a minute but part of the reason for that is because in January I tend to kind of get the opposite of of losing my mojo so to speak because I have just finished a ton of things and now I could start anything right and so I get overwhelmed with that idea and end up you know I, I end up not doing a lot because I'm overthinking or everything I can do all the possibilities so um you know, but I'm working through it, you know, I'll be back on track probably by next week. So, but I was watching some videos while I was um, getting things in order out there at today, and um, I just found this new channel. Uh, well, it's not a new channel, it's new to me, but not, but she's not new. Um, it's called Mostly Quilts, and she did a video about this the whole cutting up old quilts thing and and apparently uh, there's this huge controversy and uh, Mary Fawns from Fawns and Porter um, is very against <laughs> cutting up of old quilts and I just thought I would kind of jump on here and give my two cents worth about it and so first of all I totally agree that there's absolutely no reason to cut up an, a perfectly good quilt. Uh, doesn't matter how old it is. If it's a good quilt, why why cut it? Why cut it to make a jacket or whatever? Just make the pieces you need to make the jacket. Like, why cut up an old quilt to do that? Quilts aren't really made to be worn outside. They're not an outdoor item <laughs> and so it doesn't make sense to me that people are cutting them up for jackets um but all of that being said I do think that there's a big difference between a family deciding that a quilt that has been in their family for a very long time has been worn out and and it's time to let it be something new and, and that family upcycling it because as an example I have this quilt this is obviously a grandmother's um, flower garden and this was made by either my great-grandmother possibly my great-great-grandmother um, it's not marked it's not dated and so neither my mother or my grandmother could remember um, they have both since passed on, so I'm the oldest of the, the women in my family. And so, um, you know, so that, that knowledge has been lost. But in any case, it's very, very old. And, and as you can see, you know, and this quilt, I, my, all my kids use this quilt at one point or another. It's been very, very well loved. And there's pieces where the, the batting is just completely missing, um, there's, you know, there's pieces here like, like this where, you know, it's, it's come apart. And so we've decided as a family that, um, over this last holiday season that I'm, what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to cut it up and I'm going to make Christmas ornaments out of it so that way everybody can have a piece and, Instead of it being something that we don't, we're afraid to use because we don't want to ruin it anymore. To where as Christmas ornaments, we'll all be able to use them and we'll all be able to have that memory and know that. That this, this was a quilt that was made by, you know, someone in our family. That being said, um... Not just Christmas ornaments will be made out of this. I do hope to be, I do hope to salvage enough of it out of the center that's not as badly worn. You know, the edges of quilts will out faster. Um, but it is, it is hand stitched too, you know, and that's one of the amazing things to me about this thing is that it was, it was hand stitched. She hand stitched all of these, all of these hexies together. Like that's just so like, ah, to me. So, um, but I hope to be able to cut enough out of the center to, um, salvage a baby blanket. 
and I'm just going to rebind it, you know, after cutting it down. At least that's what I hope to do. So this will be a series coming up um, after I figure out how to film out there at the table. Um, that's part of what I've been doing over the last um, couple weeks is um, trying to figure out how to how to film some of the new stuff that I want to include. And so, um, but yeah, and then there's, see this quilt here behind me? This is the one I just finished. So, um, you know, I'm not an avid quilter and I'm certainly not a traditional quilter at any means, but at the same time, if one of my quilts is still around in a hundred years, first of all, yay me, right? Like, wow. And then... I just hope whoever whoever has custodianship of it at the time, you know, whether it's, you know, family members or his, it, it's one that I gave to a friend and it's their family that now has it, whatever the case may be, um, if they have the ability to take a damaged quilt and turn it into something they're going to actively use, I would love that. But I'm not every quilter. I'm very utilitarian. I upcycle, I recycle, you know, I try and minimize my waste as much as possible. Um, you know, make sure to go thoroughly go grocery shopping instead of stopping by over the grocery store every day, you know, like things like that. So I don't quilt art quilts, you know, I don't, I don't do the quilts that are meant to be hung on a wall and are meant to be preserved. I do think that there are two separate categories of quilts and a utilitarian quilt can be artistic. It can be beautiful. It can be amazing. But if it was designed to be used, you know, like actively used on a bed, you know, especially by children, that quilt's not really likely to last as long as an art quilt that is heavily embellished, you know, with the embroidery and the buttons and the ribbons and the lace and all of that and hung on a wall and washed every occasionally, very, very carefully, delicately. You know, those are two different kinds of things in my world, you know, and I know not every quilter is going to agree with that. Um, and, but, you know, that's just, that's my two cents on it. You know, I think that everything in the art world kind of has those two categories. There's, you know, there's utility painting, like, such as painting walls. You know, that's utility painting. And then there's fine art painting. And there's, you know, utilitarian crochet, where you're just crocheting a blanket that you're going to give to a toddler. And you have no expectation of it surviving their childhood, let alone you know, being passed down. And if it manages to, then amazing. That's great. But at the same time, you're not really expecting that as you make it. You, your, your purpose is for it to be used versus, you know, that crocheted landscape that is meant to be hung on a wall. Very different things. They get handled very differently. They get treated very differently. This whole idea in the fashion world of taking perfectly good old quilts and cutting them up to make jackets. I don't agree with that. I, I do think that that's wrong. There's, there's absolutely no reason ever, in my opinion, to cut into a perfectly good quilt. Why would you do that? You know, somebody has put a huge amount of time and energy and effort into creating that, whether it's your taste or not. Um, it doesn't diminish the artistry and the time put into it. Um, so yes, I will be cutting up my, my great grandmother's quilt. However, I will not be going out and sourcing quilts just to make jackets or tote bags. That's just not going to happen. Um, if I come across to other old quilts, you know, I'm not saying I won't cut them up. What I'm saying is that I will do everything in my power to honor that art piece of art and that that person's time in a way that that piece will allow me to based on on my skills and the and how damaged it is you know because some some quilts are in really bad shape you know they get nested up in by rats or something and you know you've only got like a block that you can salvage realistically 
And so there's no reason why you shouldn't cut that quilt and salvage that block. And, you know, you, there's so many things you can do with a single quilt block. But, you know, but yeah, this whole concept of taking perfectly good quilts and, and cutting them up for, for no good reason. Especially something antique. I just, I, I have an issue with that, you know. That's my two cents worth. But as far as like quilts today, you know, modern quilts... Still, why would you go and buy a quilt or how, you know, take a quilt that a friend made and cut it up? Why would you do that? I don't, if you want to make a quilted jacket, make the pieces and then make the jacket. But I don't know, I think I've repeated myself. I've recorded this a couple times today because of the interruptions of the dogs and, um, you know, then my husband got home and just all kinds of things. So I don't want to bore you and repeat myself, but... Um, channel update is that I am, um, I will get, get back to my Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule as soon as I possibly can after I deal with my January overwhelmedness thing that happens and we will be, um, repurposing. You're not really repurposing. We will be, we will be cutting into this quilt and salvaging what we can and, and making some Christmas ornaments. Um, I will be, I'm, I plan to, um, take part of this and turn it into a journal cover for my, my quilt, my past quilt notes. Um, cause I make notes as I go, but I don't really keep them and I don't have like a record of the quilts that I've made. And I, I've realized lately that that's, that's not a good idea. And so since I'm gonna, or not the best idea. And so since I'm going to cut this up anyways, I thought, what better journal cover for my quilt journal could there be? <laughs> since I'm already going to cut this in, in up anyways, because there is, there's a, a fair amount of damage on the back where there's just a lot of little, little holes that you can stick your finger in. And so the batting, each time it washes, the batting just falls out and it just, it's just not good. And so we will be repurposing this and you'll be seeing that and I, I will um, be sharing my I have several journals that I made throughout the Christmas season just didn't get around to listing or, or doing the flip throughs um, my son's going to be making some more of our um, hardback scroll cover journals so um, be looking forward to that and um, I will be having a lot more stuff for sale this year I hope to get into creating some digital art this year and, and having some digital things available on Etsy and my own website and all kinds of stuff this year. I have, I have big plans, big hopes. We'll see. We'll see how much I accomplish this year. So um, thank you all so much for joining me and um, go ahead and let me know how you feel, what you feel in, in my comments below. You know, I want to hear what, what other people think about this whole quilt controversy of cutting up quilts and and repurposing them especially from the junk journal world because we do cut up old quilts in in the junk journal world that's a fairly common thing and so i i know that you know maybe maybe some of maybe some junk journalists out there haven't really thought about the amount of time and energy that went into some of those quilts and and like i said but then again maybe they're only cutting up the damaged ones because we junk journalers are we we really like to rooting those, those dark corners and, and pull out those things that are damaged and give them new life. And so I am, I am very curious um, as to what you all think about, about this whole concept of to cut up an antique quilt or not. So thank you so much for watching and I will, um, don't forget to like and subscribe and I will be back with you soon.